we want to continue our discussion of limits by looking at some more interesting functions. Let's first recall the definition of tangent of x. Tangent of x, you'll remember, is defined as sine of x divided by cosine of x. And we often think about sine and cosine in relation to the unit circle, the circle of radius 1 centered at the origin. And this unit circle, remember, has the property that, that if you take any angle, here we'll just use x's, or you could use theta or alpha or some other name for it, any angle, the coordinates of that point will be given by cosine of the angle and sine of that angle. So if we want to go and graph tangent of x, we'll need to use our unit circle to help us remember the values of sine and cosine. Going around the unit circle it is moving from 0 degrees to 180 to 360 degrees, or in radians, that's going from 0 radians to pi radians, pi is 180 degrees, so up here in half, halfway, we 90 degrees or half of pi, pi over 2 radians. You could keep going 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, and so forth. Or you could go the opposite direction and have negative radians. So going down one quarter would be negative pi over 2. And going all the way halfway around would be going negative pi, and so forth. So let's go ahead and begin trying to calculate some values of this. If we want to figure what is the value of tangent of x, so let's say I want to graph y equals tangent of x, then I should begin, let's say, at 0. And if I plug 0 in here, 0 for sine, 0 for cosine, well, at 0, my cosine, my x value is 1. So at 0, I'm over 1, and my sine is 0. So at angle 0, I'm at sine of 0, cosine is 1, so it's 0 divided by 1, sine divided by cosine, that will give me 0. If, if I go all the way up here, now my x value will be 0 and my y value will be 1. This is a little bit confusing, I mean x in two ways, but, but here at angle pi over 2, my cosine is 0, my sine is 1, so I get 1 divided by 0. My tangent here will be 1 divided by 0 at pi over 2. And if there's anything you remember from, from learning about division, it's, it's you don't want to divide by 0. So we're going to say that's undefined. I'm just going to draw a line there to say it's not defined, you can't divide by 0. Well, what if we hadn't gone quite to pi over 2? We don't want to divide by 0. What if we had gone just shy of pi over 2? Just a little bit less than pi over 2. Well, then our x value, this, this x value here, would, would be something that's, that's a little bit bigger than 0. It's a really small number. I don't know, maybe 0 0.1 or something. Some small number. And the y value for that angle would be just a little bit less than 1. Something like, I don't know, maybe, maybe 0.9 or 0.9 something. I'll just 0.9 dot dot dot. A little bit less than 1. But, but think about what happens. When you divide a number a little bit less than 1 by a number close to 0, what's it going to do? Hey, if it was 0.9 divided by 1, 0.1, it'll just give you 9. Or if this was something just shy of 1, divided by a really tiny number, divided by the really tiny number makes it blow up, makes it get bigger. So when you're just smaller than pi, over 2, you have some big value. And so you might then start remembering, oh yeah, that's right, tangent starts going up bigger and bigger and bigger. As you get closer and closer and closer to pi over 2, you're dividing by a number that's, that's really close to 0. So taking something about 1 and dividing by something really close to 0 is making it shoot up, it's making it bigger and bigger and bigger. We can follow similar reasoning from going the opposite direction. Again, at minus pi over 2, at minus pi over 2, my, my function will not be, it won't be defined because I'll be at the point 0 minus 1. So again, I'm doing the sine divided by the cos, I'm dividing by 0, so it's not defined there. So it's not defined here. 
But, but as I pick points just a little bit smaller than minus pi over 2, just a little bit less, when I'm right here a little bit smaller, then, then I would be pretty close to minus 1, but I'm no longer at 0. I'm a really tiny number like 0.1 or 0.01 or something like this. So when I divide by that, something close to minus 1 divided by a 0.1, I would end up with a really big negative number. Negative, because there's a negative, something close to negative 1 divided by a really tiny number blows up to be a, a big negative value. So, so then we start recovering the, the graph of tangent. And you can remember this, this kind of repeats, right? There's this, there's this nice repetition to tangent where it just repeats. And so let's just remind ourselves why that is. If I'm a little bit bigger than pi over 2, I, I'm something now a little bit smaller than 0 for my x value. My cosine would be a little bit smaller than 0, like maybe minus 0.1 or something a little bit less than 0. But, but my y value, my height, my sine, is still really close to 1. It's like 0 0.9 or something. So again, dividing, you'll get something big like, like 9, but it'll be negative because you have negative there. So you get down to a big negative number. Okay, so tangent looks something like this. Now, given tangent, we can calculate some limits for it. For instance, you might want to calculate what is the limit as, say, x goes to 0 of tangent of x. And, and doing this, you can say, okay, well, well, remember when we think about limit, we want to think about what happens from both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So, so from the left-hand side, when, when I'm coming towards 0, when I'm coming in towards 0, my y values are coming up again closer and closer to 0. And from the right-hand side, when I'm going to 0, my y values are coming down, getting closer and closer to 0. So from both sides, getting closer and closer to 0, so we would just say it's 0. But, but what if we wanted to do a value like x approaches pi over 2? Well, perhaps now you say, well, tangent is not defined at pi over 2. Right? Like, tangent is not defined here. But that's okay, because limit isn't asking what happens at pi over 2. The limit's asking what happens when you get close to pi over 2. And let's investigate that. What happens to get close to pi over 2? Well, it seems like there are different things depending on if I'm coming in from the left or if I'm coming in from the right. If I'm coming in from the left, the limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the left. Notice this, this is shooting up as I come towards pi over 2 from the left. These values are shooting up, getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Now, now we could say it does not exist, but let me introduce so some new terminology. We're going to say, well, since it's shooting up and getting bigger and bigger and being arbitrarily big as we get sufficiently close to pi over 2, we'll say that this means the limit is infinity. By calling the limit infinity, what I'm saying here is I'm saying that tangent of x gets arbitrarily large. For x values, well, here I'm on the left-hand side, so it's x values a little bit smaller than, than pi over 2, but x values that are sufficiently close. So, so as I get closer and closer to pi over 2, my, my y values get arbitrarily large. They go off to infinity and beyond. How about from the right-hand side? The limit as x approaches pi over 2 from the right-hand side. Well, now you can see what's going to happen to your values for tangent. They're getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. They're going to negative infinity. And so for one side, we're going up to infinity. From the other side, they're going down to negative infinity. It never actually reaches infinity. That's impossible. You can't get to infinity. This is just a way of saying the limit's becoming arbitrarily large. The value's getting larger and larger and larger. And from this side, minus infinity just means they're getting smaller and smaller and smaller down into the negatives, larger and larger negative numbers. And so what is the overall limit? Well, since we're going different directions both ways, we'd say the overall limit does not exist. So on the one hand, the limit may be going to infinity. On the other hand is going to minus infinity. So the overall limit, since the left hand and right hand limits disagree, the overall limit 
does not exist. We'll explore some more examples of, of this type of behavior. When you have a point that's not defined and, and the function blows up on either side to infinity or minus infinity, we call these points, we call this a vertical asymptote. A vertical asymptote. Because it's getting closer and closer, but never reaches. It's just an imaginary line here that's saying that your graph is shooting up to infinity or down to minus infinity. So we'll see some more examples of these vertical asymptotes and, and see how they help us uh, evaluate and make sense of limits.